In this video, we're going to be looking at monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is similar to perfect competition. However, the difference being the good or service provided is differentiated. It is not identical. Now, a monopolistically competitive firm is one which makes up a small part of the industry and the industry is uh, for a product which cannot be provided um, identically in all the firms. Now, it has four characteristics, three of which are exactly the same as perfect competition. There's perfect knowledge, low to no barriers of entry, um, different, a large number of buyers and sellers, and the fourth difference being this differentiated goods or services. Now, examples of this kind of market structure are more easily found than perfect competition because it is more likely that firms supply slightly different goods than exactly the same goods. And so examples of this might be like hairdressers, restaurants. If you look at, let's say, the Chinese cuisine restaurants. Now, all the restaurants provide Chinese food. However, the um, soups they will provide will be different. They will taste different because they're slightly differentiated. A different chef makes them, different style it's made. Um, it's uh, different ingredients they use, however, it's still chicken sweet corn soup. So this uh, market structure, the best way to understand it, is a bit like a cross between a monopoly and perfect competition. Perfect competition being large number of buyers or sellers, very competitive, but monopoly being that the chicken sweet corn soup firm A provides, none of the other firms will be able to provide the same. But that's like the chicken sweet corn soup the firm B provides, Again, none of A or any of the other firms are able to produce. Now, I want to move on to talking about the diagrams. Now, like in perfect competition, in the short run, these firms can achieve abnormal profits and losses. And this is to do with the industry supply curve. So, let's say the market is doing really well for chicken sweet corn soup, Chinese cuisine, sorry. And a lot of the investors see, hmm, this is where I want to put my money in. I'm going to start my business in a Chinese restaurant. This is where people put money. This increases the number of supply in the industry. When supply is increased, price drops. Now, when price drops, and we look at the firm's cost curves, they actually make a loss. Now, as you are seeing in the diagram, the diagram looks just like a monopoly one because remember, for that one particular product, it is like they have a monopoly. So now, if we look that um, uh, they are profit maximizing, so marginal cost equals marginal revenue at this point, take it up to demand, and this is their price. However, the cost curve is all the way up here. So the difference between meeting their costs and the price is the loss they make. Now, let's say because people are making losses, people stop joining the restaurant, uh, Chinese cuisine restaurant industry. Many firms are made to be bankrupt and they leave the industry. Um, firms will start making abnormal profit. Now, how does this happen? Well, when you decrease supply, price rises and firms can make a profit because the average cost curve has stayed the same but prices increase because now a marginal cost equal marginal revenue profit maximizing output go up to demand price has increased and this red area here is the abnormal profit the difference between what um, cost they need to be meeting and the price but in the long term, they can only make normal profit. And this is because in the long term, you know, the leaving of firms and the entering of firms in the end cancels out. That's a good way to think of it. So if we look here, again, same just like a monopoly. Profit maximizing output, MR equals MC, take up to demand, that's price. However, when you take it up to demand this time, you actually intersect with the average cost curve. It's a bit like a tangent for those of you who do maths. It's a bit like a tangent and therefore the actual meeting the cost is the same as the price and no um, profit or loss is made. Um, at the allocatively efficient equilibrium would be here and that would mean that price is lower and quantities increase. However, firms don't mind this under consumption, under consumption, and uh, firms, sorry, consumers don't mind this under consumption and increased price. This is because they are getting more variety in return, and more variety, more choice of goods is more valuable to a consumer. Also, even though they're not operating at the lowest point of AC each time, 
they may still be able to achieve economies of scale. This is because if we recall from before, their product is not the same as another person's product. Therefore, there will be advantages they gain from that, just like a monopoly does. They are not productively efficient. Um, MC does not equal AC at the price. They are not allocatively efficient. And, and one disadvantage would be that they can take advantage of the fact that their chicken soup is not like any other chicken soup. They might be able to increase prices slightly. However, remember, um, they won't be able to do this too much because they only make a small part of a large market. Um, this normal profit they make in the long term is not very good because this implies that there's a lack of profit they can invest into uh, research and development. And this lack of um, profit in research and development um, will mean that they're not going to be able to gain technical, um, technological um, economies of scale. There will be more a variety of products in the future. So those are some of the disadvantages. I hope this video helped. Thank you for watching.